hundred years ago, Edison thought the web was not out possible. In the 90s and after 2000, a lot of people thought it was impossible with slow modems. So here's some soothing relief. I want to talk about pain relief and how I think that pain may be caused by uh, endorphins. Research with MRI shows that when you burn your hand, like with a pot, and you hope to turn the sprinklers on so they have a fire sale and you're not fired with ambition, <laughs> your brain actually lights up very little in the MRI when there's like a lot of pain. Like, how do you know if you're a really good comic? Your wife always wins. More research always shows, as it often will, that emotional pain shows much the same change in your brain as physical pain. It's also been found in research that people with schizophrenia have 10 to 100 times as many endorphins in their circulation as other people. You may ask, what's going on with this? Because endorphins are the body's natural painkillers that are much stronger than morphine. Why do people with schizophrenia seem to be in such severe emotional pain if endorphins are actually painkillers? It's also been found that rarely schizophrenia is curable with what's called beta endorphins. Beta endorphins are a rare form of endorphins, but the problem with endorphins is to synthesize them to do more research is it's been found really difficult to synthesize endorphins because after all they're a complex organic molecule. I think this tells us that we've been looking at endorphins the wrong way or other neurotransmitters. Perhaps it's relative to which end of the neuron that they're firing on. This idea is based on what I call GBN, General Behavioral Neurology. And this idea is that all these different states of extreme thought, including genius or retardation, perhaps less extreme, normal, mental illness, uh, including depression, schizophrenia, manic depression, even autistic savants may be explainable by the idea that all intelligence is like a neuron. It branches out from simple to complex, the axon and the dendrites. The genius would be more advanced because they have more branching out and more strong trunk. It's like a, a stronger tree that wins out in competition over the other trees. They're branching out above the canopy before the other trees can branch out with a stronger trunk and more creativity. The normal person have a usual branching, and usual trunk. The retarded person would have a reduced branching and relatively reduced trunk. And the reason for the pain of people with schizophrenia is because the endorphins are flowing in reversed flow. That is to say, like when you lose weight, you're climbing up the hill with a wheelbarrow of fat, <laughs> and you're lifting it up, and you've lifted and lifted. The problem is, once you're up there at the side of the hill, and you say, well, that fat is not part of me, it's in the wheelbarrow now, it's weighing you down like a sort of tension that holds you down indefinitely. You're spending all your time just holding that fat up there if you don't have this kind of way to reduce weight. Like Maritron is get to lose like 20, 30 pounds without hunger or discomfort and doesn't have any stimulant. Maritron has only two ingredients. Went through tens of thousands of herbs to find it, the ones that cause weight loss in laboratory animals. Cognitive and fitness booster. It doesn't make you edgy like lots of uh, other types of these weight loss products and safer and all that. So it changes your hunger hormones from the inside out. And so anyhow, you're holding the wheelbarrow fat up there and that's something like mirror trim, you're going to support that weight indefinitely with a lot of tension. We imagine the first bad comment the person gets or the first wind that blows is going to tip over the wheelbarrow and all that fat comes crashing down and the diet fails. We think this is a kind of tension. When you go to sleep at night, you're getting to sleep. It's like a spiral. They found that you have a stimulus and it makes you get a little more relaxed, a little more woozy. You get another stimulus, it spirals you down further and further. So too, I think of mental illness as a sort of upside down type picture. With depression, the top side is heavy. And this is why the LDL PFC, the left dorso lateral prefrontal cortex from the left eye, is overactive in depression. It flashes on and off in severe depression. And I think this may be because the tree is top heavy. So when the wind blows, it knocks it down. Or more particularly, when there's a stimulus that reaches the LDL PFC, it gets more and more active. Well, the rest of the brain cells are like a trophy. You look at them instead of ketamine, which plumps up the nerve cells and makes them branch out more. This is a herb that causes reduction of depression. So, as I say in my other video about this, about mental illness and genius, what they have in common, maybe super cognitive boosters, I think that even with severe depression, you don't have high levels or low levels of endorphins are relatively balanced. So, I think the relatively overactivity of the LDL PFC, which contains short term memory, and they're flipping through the files, but they can't open them because they're too tired for the rest of the brain to open all those 
long-term memories which are unlimited in their duration and the number, but the short-term memory is really limited. So these are to sort of jumpstart that LDLPFC, the tail wag the dogs who solve the depression person who has it. And they've recently found these C4 genes, as I say on my other post also, about how they found that it strongly correlates with schizophrenia because of the uh, branching out of the neurons. Actually, the C4 gene causes pairing of the neurons at the time when the person's growing older, like a teen. This is usually when schizophrenia starts. And so it pairs those neurons. And I ask, why, if the neurons are being pared down, are there so many more endorphins, which indicate high levels of neural activity? And so I think the hippocampus, the base of the brain where the cells are more random than schizophrenia, they found. And yet, for most people, they're just like lined up. This is the branch of the tree that, where it would be the trunk. It's branching out where it would instead have uh, been more unified and strong, like memory. Memory relies on a strong link between unlike things. The hippocampus has been indicted in schizophrenia, also in depression. So I think it may be controlling both by way of its change. So actually, mostly it may be like the LDLPFC for severe depression, but for schizophrenia, maybe upside down. This is why schizophrenia is so speeded up in metabolism, while depression is so slowed down. Because like truth and falsehood, or hot and cold at any rate, they're not balanced the same way. So this is to say that if we watch the time reverse movie of a block of ice melting, or one of that's being heated, it's exactly time reverse. But I don't hold this, because I think that mass energy are not completely equivalent, as Einstein said, because it's actually easier by far to convert mass to energy than energy to mass. Depression has a slow rate of metabolism, and schizophrenia has a higher rate of metabolism. They're not exactly symmetrical or reversed. You know, truth is not exactly the same as falsehood reversed. Everything will always be equal and balanced, or we would fall off the earth as much as we are attracted to it. This is why I believe that gravity is not necessarily relativistic, and this may have worked to us about uniting gravity with relativity. So why does the brain only show not much change when there's actually physical pain, yet the change that does show up is somewhere for physical or emotional pain? I think this is because as the neurons are firing backwards, this is the nature of like emotional pain. This may be involved with physical pain. So when you have physical pain, they say they found also 20,000 boss neurons in the brain. These control most of the rest of the neurons of the brain. So I think what's going on is there's a certain percentage of them that are actually firing in reverse. You have those outgoing fibers and ingoing fibers of the brain. So the ones that fire backwards start to fire backward more often or more commonly. And so I think if you were in chronic pain, we might find ways of changing those neurons that are tending to fire backwards. This may help them relieve a lot of their pain. I could be wrong because I used to think that music had no center and they were baffled because it lit up every area of the brain. And I thought this might have been because of it being so general, you can't close your ears in evolution because you want to listen at night to survive from the wild animals. And so it's a passionate because we're sort of held captive. But also there's more unity in the music, like tribal fusion, like the whale song. They unify, they're going down to Mexico, and they turn around at the same time in their migration as they do in Hawaii. They don't know why. And I thought the whole world might be ringing like a bell with the whale song. What a great idea, huh? Like the sound of the plunks of the rain and the cetacean hip parade. Why worry about a heat wave? I was originally saying when they found the boss neurons, this probably wouldn't be valuable necessarily to give us much more extra energy or anything, but it might be useful for this about pain, because as in life, most of the work is done by the employees, and so I thought of going back and forth between the boss neurons and the rest of the neurons in cycles, like in evolution or in science, where you go from theory to experiment, and this might be a much more efficient way to energize the anybody's brain to make them much smarter yet. Even so, as I say on my other video about how mental illness and genius might be related, this could give us a smart pill, and this is not the way to much change depression or other mental illness because it's more severe. It's other parts of the brain, those boss neurons. Sort of like not changing your LDL or your fat levels with the usual herbs you take. They don't help you unless you're already in the normal range. But with schizophrenia, you would have a stimulus that goes up the fiber up to the higher brain that sends down the signal in reverse, it's upside down, and it makes it branch out more with the hippocampus. And it's sort of like a runaway type of collapse. You know, you have only a small stimulus creates much pain for the person with schizophrenia that's not treated. I think to cure depression, you'd have to energize all those neurons at the main part of the brain where the long-term memory is located. And for schizophrenia, you'd change much of the neurons of the hippocampus. If this was correct, and they found also the loop for OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. And if there's a book about it, I know it's true because I haven't read it 10,000 times. I read the book about adhesion, I just couldn't put it down. By breaking out of that loop, 
They found they may be able to much improve OCD. There are some who think that reducing the branching with ECT, which is still the only viable, most viable way to improve depression by way of those neurons of the LDLPSC, the short-term memory of the left dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, this is the only way that they could actually change it with ECT. But I tend to think it's more like radiant outward once it implodes and it radiates back outward. This gives us a lot of energy to the whole brain instead of just like carrying back the neurons. It actually increases the branching of the neurons of the brain. In both instances of depression and schizophrenia, you have a branching out of neurons where you wouldn't want it usually, and you have less branching elsewhere. And for severe depression, you have it of the LDLPFC branching out, and for schizophrenia, you'd have it the branching out of the hippocampus. So the idea of just curing schizophrenia by increasing the branching of the, the neurons that are not involved with the hippocampus, I think this may not work as well as finding the genes that control the branching of the hippocampus and trimming those neurons. One thing we would say about ECT, if it actually reduces that branching of the higher part of the brain, then we would say it would trim the neurons of the rest of the brain, they'd be even more atrophied. This is why I think it just radiates in, radiates back out, and energizes the whole brain. They also come out of the MRI with no particular frequency like this, and they're coming out of the MRI laughing and joking if they have severe depression before. They're no longer spelling it ETC, and these days they use anticonvulsants so the person isn't uncomfortable or anything. But I would ask if ECT actually controls depression by way of trimming the neurons, then we'd also ask why does it improve schizophrenia by trimming the neurons of the hippocampus?